Okay, welcome back. So now we're going to speak about heart rate variability. Now we touched on it previously when we spoke about Dr. Andrew Newberg, when he did the research on the nuns and the, and the monks, and how when they were meditating and they were in that peak state, their brain patterns formed a similar state. They were in a transit hyperfrontality. They were releasing a combination of neurotransmitters and hormones. They also spoke about being connected uh, or being in a coherence with what's called your heart rate variability. Heart rate variability is a way of measuring your sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. Sympathetic is fight, flight or freeze. Parasympathetic is rest and digest. So basically, uh, sympathetic, if there's a lion chasing you, common one, you run, you fight or you freeze. Parasympathetic is after that lion's either kicked your ass or if you've run, you need to rest and digest and recover from what's going on. Now, heart rate variability and the way that we measure it is important for us because we want to get a sense of priming ourselves to be in the flow state. We don't want to be, we can't really measure day to day uh, in the moment what actually happens with the heart rate variability only because the technology is not caught up with it yet. We can only measure a heart rate variability ideally in the morning, the moment we've woken up and therefore once we've taken that reading we can adapt our data accordingly to what our body and minds are uh, asking us to do to get ourselves tr triggered into the flow state. So heart rate variability is part of what happens in the flow state but there is a coherence according to the activity that we're undertaking. So there can be a coherence in just simply making a coffee in the morning, or there can be a coherence in battle, there could be a coherence in dancing. In fact, think about it, tango dancing is a nice way of thinking of sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system, a coherence, a consistent push and pull that's going on between your nervous systems. Now, uh, uh, HRV is measured by something called RR intervals. So uh, electrocardiograph, if you look at the movies, you see people lying in bed and they've got the wee machine next to them and they've got that little bing, bing, bing. So that tells them if they're alive or boom, boom, tells them that they're dead or in Scotland, dead. Now those RR intervals, there is a, vera there is a difference in space between them. Okay, so let's say there's there's a 0 0.9 gap here, a 1.2, 0 0.9, 1.3, the gaps vary. When there's a good variation in that RR intervals indicates that there is health there. Okay, and that's really what we want to do. Now, the way that they measure it is through something called uh, the root mean square success of differences. So that's the differences between the RR intervals here. Okay, now don't fret too much about all that. It's a bit more technical that you really need to know. But one thing I do want to point out is, is that <clears throat> your breathing, uh, your breathing affects the gaps here. So when you breathe, when you breathe in, okay, these gaps shorten and when you breathe out, they lengthen. Okay, and that's really how they can measure that as well. So <clears throat> there is a few devices that you can use to monitor and track your heart rate variability. You can use the heart the straps, there is other things like you have the new watches, now the Apple watches, but the, the readings for those I believe and the latest research is pointing out is not quite as accurate as you want it to be. Um, so what I use is something called a PPG, which is basically an app and you use your smartphone. The reason I do that is because it's simple, it's easy, it's, it's not like I have to pick up multiple things to take the reading. I just want something quick, short and effective so that I can maintain a consistency in my measurements, which is the important thing. Now when you do your PPG readings, you're actually it's picking up what's called the bioreceptor reflex, uh, reflux, which is the, it's taking uh, the blood pressure levels, okay, and that's done through your breathing, your heart rate, okay, so those levels are affecting there, that's how the PPG devices work with it. So, you want to, so basically why measure your heart rate variability? Of course it's part of being in the flow state and the task that you're doing, you will be pulled into having a coherence there. But keep in mind, okay, so sometimes you can be in a sympathetic state, very anxious, nervous, and you need to have a coherence there. So what pulls that down? We go back on and we're talking about our breathing. So the breathing affects it. 
So as you remember, the breathing will lengthen these gaps here, right? So breathing will help calm yourself down, will help pull you into that parasympathetic state, which will give you that coherence when you're going into certain situations. Also, think about taking your heart rate variability. You see, the potential of uh, flow is everywhere. Everything can pull you into flow. It's you that stops you from getting pulled into flow. So, if you've had a hard training session, a hard business meeting, something stressful, you may have been out the night before, you may have been eating foods that have affected you and given you a negative response, your heart rate variability in the morning might be not in a productive state for you. So what you need to do is adapt your day accordingly. So you need to look for other things that will help pull you and trigger you into the flow state. So maybe one day you wake up and on your plan is to go to the gym and have a very hard workout routine. However, your heart rate variability is in an unproductive state. So what you need to do is adapt your day according to your heart rate variability, not to the piece of paper. You're looking to use heart rate variability as an internal coach or guide to help you. What should I do today? This is what you do to get yourself towards flow, okay? So heart rate variability is an important aspect of flow, health, and well-being. And it really is the secret weapon to get yourself into the flow state on a consistent basis. Thanks for listening. Speak soon. Ciao.